Hello everyone, nice to be here, hope you're well. Let me know if there's anything wrong with my audio in terms of you can't see me properly, which I don't think is the case, um, but usually it's a problem with audio. And speaking of audio, I should put my phone on silent. Whoa, the color here looks really weird. Oh, I can't help the clouds going in and out. Anyway, guys, I hope everyone is doing really well. I was always thinking I should... I was wondering if I should do a black and white stream one day, just all the way through, without worrying about all of this stupid color. I've just got an OCD for color. Anyway, let's pop out the chat. If you would like to ask me a sensible question, an interesting one, that hopefully I can answer as well. Sometimes they're interesting questions, but I don't know enough about it or I don't have an opinion on it. Make sure on the right here in the stream, if you're live, that you put a whole bunch of uh, two or three brightly colored emojis right before your comment or question. So you, I know it's directed at me and, and that it's a question you'd like me perhaps to consider and maybe read out. As always, we're discussing my recent videos of the past week. And uh, there were some really good comments. It's, it's basically revolving around the personalities of the dating coaches. And uh, what it says about them, uh, it's basically the whole sort of dating dynamic today, it's, it's very foreign to, to people who are a bit older. Uh, I talk about it often on Discord with Boff and Rocket and a couple of the older guys. Uh, and like myself, I, I was dating pre-internet. I was dating when they first started online dating, like proper sites, profiles, things like that. And this was when online dating was uh, synonymous to going online and, and looking at naked pictures of women and things like that. You didn't tell anyone. It was kind of a bit shameful. And then there was like social media and like Facebook and stuff in, uh, in the mid aughts. And then the apps came around and now it's just McDonald's. No, like virtually no one, uh, you don't really hear of anyone meeting face to face. And it's surprising when they do. Uh, most people, it's just a regular thing. They they meet online, they hook up online, they live double lives online, they live secret lives. Like they, they don't really, sort of, there's there's no sort of um, real personality formed or shown. We, we're all getting off on playing games. Like we just hide from each other. We hide from ourselves and then complain that nothing works out. Oh, why didn't the right thing work out? It's because we're most of us aren't acting the right way. Like the way we think people should act, a lot of times that we, we don't act that way ourselves. We expect so much more from others than from ourselves. Hey, um, all the regulars are Vero, martial arts, oriental medicine, Quasiman Dice, Feral, Boffin, David, August Lyon. Hey guys, T-Dog, Feral Android. Roman. Okay, there's a few people with a wrench, so if people misbehave, we've got people with a wrench. Hey, Donna, how are you going? She's the main wrencher. <laughs> now she's got some support. Anyway, really, it's a nice kind of sunny clouds going in and out day here in Melbourne. Uh, the last few videos this week about sort of the dating coaches, the personality of them, and sort of, I think it was, it, it touched the nerve. It, it, they, they were really popular this week, and there's some really good discussions, uh, much more than I could get to, but I tried to pluck out a few that were notable and exceptional. You guys keep the comments coming. You guys are really supporting the, the topics of the videos and expanding them way beyond, you know, my little bubble world where I'm observing and living things. That's my particular esoteric kind of life. And I'm drawing experiences and making videos from those and the observations I've had there. 
but uh, you guys have had like vastly different ones, but at the same time, very relatable ones to other people. You know, I, I, I can sort of, I may not relate to them to the extent that some of you guys have, have been through those experiences like marriages and divorces and, and uh, horrific things happening and, you know, dodging major bullets that I've never had to worry about dodging or I've been lucky enough never to have to face. So keep the comments coming. Uh, they're really, really good. Uh, but it's really interesting. I started to think about this week, you know, with the lack of um, male role models, um, with masculinity being sort of really pushed to the side. So there's only, I'm not even going to say femininity because femininity is not there anymore. Like this sort of strong, level-headed, mature woman who has self-respect and carries herself as a double X chromosome sort of proud person like our grandparents did. Like I remember a lot of strong, intelligent, level-headed women when I was growing up and now aside from the people I've known most of my life and, you know, some older people, uh, I don't see any sort of being manufactured. Um, so, and you see it in movies, the, the, the female characters are absurd. And it's not, it's because of the way women perceive themselves, how they conduct themselves, how they insist they are and how, what they insist from others. Um, it's just not living in reality. You can blame the internet as well. But again, at the end of the day, all of us have to make a, dis uh, make a decision. Do we want to live here or do we want to live on the screen? In a place where we just make up stories. Everyone's a fictional writer these days. Everyone's a novelist of their own life. But pretending it's real. Just because that's where their headspace is all the time. At least when we held a book, it was external to us. We could get lost in the book, but it was separate enough that we were reading words on a page. We're actually absorbed into the screen. This was something that I remember, I think it was um, Fran Libowitz said in her documentary, not the last one, the one before. Uh, she was commenting on the past, like in um, the early 1900s, where the advent of the TV came along. And uh, psychologists and sort of more forward thinking and intelligent people more than there are today. Uh, even the average of society was worried about people being absorbed by the TV and being lost in the TV and being sort of addicted and sort of like the way people are now with social media and their mo mobile phones. People were worried about that with televisions back then. And she was saying that that was the worry, but Luckily, the TV was far enough away that you could see the furniture and the plants on the side and the wall and everything. So it was far enough removed that you weren't sucked in. But now because we're here and we don't go out there, like we're, we're just absorbed into this world that everyone's just curating fictional lives and insisting that it's real. Because when you create it online, look, look, I'm looking at it. I'm talking to it. Um, I'm interacting with virtual reality. It is real. This is what I talk to. This is a relationship I have. Uh, the, the relationship we used to have with TV back in the day was it was passive. There were intelligent programs, but also there was a really big distance between us and the TV that like insisted that we remain in the real world. Anyway, let's get to some questions. And by the way, I've talked to a few people since because I was trying to be considerate. I said, I mentioned to people in my life as well as to some guys online, I said, is it actually rude for me to drink coffee um, in videos or on streams? And because um, I didn't think it was anything bad. I, if you're eating and chewing with your mouth open and stuff, I think eating while you're trying to talk is, is stupid because you can't understand someone's words. But I think drinking is... I actually like it, and I think it's a. It might be a, a guy thing. You know, guys have beers and have it and and chat. So drinking and talking goes hand in hand, and I think it's actually, it adds, to sort of you know, it's that kind of, it adds to the conversation, you know, in some way. But I agree, eating is a no no. So um, yeah, I was, I was kind of, a bit not worried about it, but I remember once or twice, I think um. This was a long time ago. I had one or two comments, people saying, yeah, 
you know, it's pretty rude to drink or sip your tea or something. I can't remember what I was drinking during a stream or during a video. It would have been during a stream, I think. But now I don't. It kind of hit me that, yeah, the best times I've had in conversation is when you sit with a friend at a bar or at home over a drink. So I think drinking is very, very good. August Lyons said, human is trying to be like a bad boy and be fashionably late. Yeah, I was uh, three or four minutes late today. I had to get the final touches on the stream. I got a few slides together. So namely, we're talking about, let's get on, let's get the show on the road, say. <clears throat> All right, so again, any questions? Add a few emojis before your question and I'll read them out. Okay. The topic basically, when I look at the, the last three videos, it's who's talking to you and who are you led by? And this could, you could broaden this to being in a relationship, overbearing parents, um, not having many friends, but you sort of, you just take the friends you have. And you might have outgrown that friend or that friend's not a really good influence in your life and you don't like doing what they're doing. And so the dating gurus were a very obvious one because we see the most popular ones are the most sensational ones. That you know, in, in this relationship sphere between men and women, especially in on YouTube and social media, it gets a lot of eyeballs and it's very much reality TV tabloid style. And so the things that get rewarded are the worst kind of people. It's like what it's like when you watch reality TV. Uh, in in Australia, we've got a a really popular show called Married at First Sight, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's this stupid show where two people who have never met they get married, they see each other for the first time at the altar, and they try and make it work. And the psychologists on the show they intentionally pick people who aren't going to get along really well. But in their eyes, it's like, well, Jane's got a fear of X, and Bill here, he's actually got a lot of X. And so that'll be good for her to overcome her fear of X. It's like, you guys are nuts. It's good, like they're going to just be opposing each other. They don't like each other. And so they get like a, an extrovert trying to match with an introvert, like some bad boy going out with a, with a girl who's like really pure and is optimistic and is sort of uh, like just ripe to be taken advantage of and scarred for life by this guy. And so it's just good entertainment, like, because people want to watch train wrecks. People don't want to sit and read. People want to be hit in the face. Uh, people want to be shocked. People, it's just, it's sad uh, because people stay like that. They stay like a, a teenager, a horny teenager, a horny teenager who loves watching horror movies <clears throat> and extreme sports. Anyway, and the topic really, I thought about what topic would really encapsulate what I'm talking about in the last couple of videos, whether it's dating coaches, women, you know, who are the people you're following and, you know, you got, you're salivating over and you think you've got the answers and you want to be with and you love and you're attracted to and who are mentoring you. Uh, who are you drawn to? Who are the relationships you're having? And what popped into my head was like these egotistical men and women who offer very little. We pick and date these women who offer very little. We pick the bitches and the hard women and the hot messes. And we, and then we watch the guys who mentor us that are just like the women. So it's mind focus. Um, so it's kind of like we are dysfunctionally picking people who are nothing like uh, the people that we naturally have as friends, uh, lifelike, like where our comfort zone is. We don't pick it. And yes, they'll say, well, we'll get out of your comfort zone, human. It's like, not there. Come on. I don't want to be fighting. Like, I don't want to be at a job I hate all the time with my entertainment or, you know, 
I want to come home to some, I want to look forward to coming home to somebody or going to see my girlfriend in the same way I look forward to catching up with a friend and having coffee. Abel returns to Eden. Thanks for the donation, the super chat. Uh, they say the US has used the nuclear option against men now. They are going to pass laws and require child support during pregnancy without man mandating paternity tests. The smart men are out at this point. Yeah, I was told uh, recently that uh, vasectomies in America since the Roe v. Wade thing has jumped by 900%. So it's not just men on their own are like even more scared. It's like, no, no, you're not getting anything out of me. So there's less families are going <laughs> to, the birth rate's going to go down even more now, which sort of acts like accidental pregnancies for men. Great. Women are probably asking their men now to get vasectomies because it's too hard to get an abortion. And again, it kind of brings to light that women were using abortion as birth, birth control. It was just a convenient birth control. It wasn't really there for the most extreme or egregious circumstances, which is what it was really designed for. Now, you can say times have changed, but what you're actually doing when you're, um, when you're getting an abortion, you can't, when it suits you, gloss over it. And when it doesn't suit you, get on a podium of morality as well. So it's a lot of interesting questions. But uh, yeah, yeah, I heard in America, you got the laws in America are getting, you know, in the land of the home and the brave and the free or whatever the hell your slogan is. Uh, I think you might need to change that. Well, they're changing it. They're starting to change laws now. I think they've pushed their idea of freedom, lazy freedom to extremes. I have no problem with freedom, but you insist that there are boundaries to your freedom. If you want to be free here, it comes with a whole bunch of responsibilities and you can have all the freedom you want as long as you abide by those responsibilities. So people can say, well, responsibilities are rules. It's like <laughs> the consequences to responsibility. If you don't have any consequences and, and responsibilities, chaos ensues. You can't predict the freedom you want. If I want freedom in a certain direction, the intelligent person wants freedom to be able to, to, to lead him somewhere or to produce something or construct a better life going forward. But if all you're doing with freedom is a concept of opening a door and anything happens, of course, the more sensible thing to do is stay safe and say, well, if I have all my needs met, I don't need, I don't need unpredictable say, uh, freedom. I would rather have predictable safety. But responsibility with freedom especially when society kind of insisted that men and women and all of us conduct ourselves within certain parameters, you were able to get a lot out of freedom because there were ways by uh, ways that you went about it and then you were responsible for the freedom you chose. You couldn't cry to the government. If you did something and you got the sensible consequences of what would happen, like, the, you know, if, um, let's try and think of, a, an activity or a risky life, right? Like say business, let's try business again. Uh, nine out of 10 businesses fail. And when it fails, most guys, and most guys are the ones starting businesses, they kind of know when it fails, there's sensible ways in which it fa failed or they can kind of see where they failed or where they were lazy. And so there's ways that, okay, I, I wanted to be free to pursue this. And everyone kind of knows the pitfalls. So do you know what I mean? There's, there's freedom, but then there's responsibility and natural consequences towards your freedom to get what you want. I went around in circles there a bit, but you know what I mean. Uh, Boffin said, human, same for me. Uh, I remember the women from my youth as being much more adult and mature. Uh, I remember pre-social media dating at least. Um, but certainly before online dating. I just remember there was the nervousness that's always going to be there with guys. It's kind of wired in for most guys. But when you'd approach a girl, it was nervous because you were nervous because it was pretty much up to you. She could just sort of stay there passively and be nervous. And you could see she was nervous, but she might smile or whatever. But she'd show you genuinely that she was interested or not interested. But there would be like a, an authenticity to sort of smiling and being nervous and fumbling through things. Now women just detest guys. They don't like them. 
we are guilty and we're doing them a favor almost by going on dates with them if we get a date. Like there's so much hard work to be worthy of even being talked to or going on a date with a woman. And then when you get there, the interview process starts and then it's kind of like, you know, you don't just have to give 100% to this potential relationship. You have to give like a 1,000%. And she's going to sit there with her arms crossed. Like the, it just pushes men and men away from women. Just for the fact that the intelligent guy kind of knows this is ridiculous. Like you're not giving anything and you want me to give a 1,000% and you're still not happy. And then you're still keeping your options open and you don't want to, you don't want to do anything for me. If, if I say like, ah, oh, you know, I really, can, can you get me a coffee? Get it yourself. Like independent strength. Good, good luck. Uh, I, let me see. Doug B, thank you very much for the super chat donation. His comment is disposable people living disposable lives masked in altruism. Yeah. Yeah, it's the insidious part is that they've used these empty Oprah, selfish, self-entitled aphorisms to um, say, oh, it's for me, it's about the moment. You know, I, I, I'm not future focused, I'm not past focused, which is another way of saying I'm not going to be responsible for the future and I'm not going to acknowledge the train wreck I left behind me as well. I'm just in the moment, man. Like I'm really Buddhist. So a lot of people are using the Oprah style way absolving, of absolving themselves of being responsible in the way they interact with other people, how they use other people. I mean, I don't believe in that kind of magical karma where guys think that just because their ex treated them like crap that, you know, she's going to get hers. She may not. She may have treated you like crap and she goes on to be happy with some other guy. Who knows? Um, the world doesn't magically balance things uh, where everyone's happy. The best you can do is try and balance your own scales and not worry about, you know, and not have these people, um, not embrace them into your life, not let them into your door, not have relationships with them, not trust them. And you don't trust them because of very rational reasons. You don't say, well, I'm a good person. I trust people no matter what. They're the bad people. I'm good. Like I said in a recent video, I misspoke on the first one, uh, this one, because I was just synonymously, when I think of nice guy, I think of decent guy. But yet, um, a lot of people commented, um, instead of nice guy, probably something like decent guy or good guy is probably better because nice guy is now synonymous with it being a doormat, which I can kind of agree with. Okay. And Gronus Angry says, I'm thankful for that mute button. <laughs> um, coaches are mainly regurgitating Jordan Peterson and Kevin Samuel sprinkled with Tomasi. Yeah, I've noticed that. They're all just kind of like recycling the same ingredients from each other. And look, there's something to be said about repeating things. I, I'm, I'm an advocate of repeating. You, you don't just kind of say it once, you're enlightened, the light bulb goes off. And then you can go forward in life never looking at that again and never reminding yourself and never exercising that point again until it becomes a reflex. Because the light bulb moment that goes off, if you don't exercise and keep, you know, keep the generator going by cranking the handle on that light bulb, uh, the, the light bulb, it just kind of fades away and it dies. So there's something to be said by exercising it. But my point is these people using it as a scam, like going, oh, well, that works. I've got a big ego. I'm full of myself. I can make money off this. That's a different point of view. And I think it's more insidious in areas like this where it's to do with, you know, broken people, people who have suffered and you're pretending to be genuine. But really what you're doing is saying, like, I don't give a crap about these people. Um, I'm a car salesman, really. And uh, I see an in here where I can make a lot of money and then just leave. And then later on, they're not going to care if, say, that whole area of YouTube or self-help dies. And they're going to say, I don't care. Like, I'll just use my, my egotistical nature to 
become a real estate agent, become a car salesman, uh, start a business. They're like, they don't care. They're just going to slot themselves anywhere where they can exploit people. And th their rationale is like, well, if they're too stupid enough, like it's not my fault, I'm surviving. They're very Darwinian. They're very survivalist. They don't care because to them, it's like, at the end of the day, you're going to take care of yourself before other people, but they don't see a distinction um, between treating other people bad. Uh, they just kind of see, well, everyone's out, out for themselves. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. That's their guiding principle. So those kind of people, there's nothing you can do about it. They're going to exploit you. The best you can do, as I'm always trying to say, is, is uh, getting people to think better about them, what they want, be honest about who they are, and express it through this orifice. And not just look at going into orifices all the time, especially with the guys. Uh, Professor Nuance, uh, thank you for the super chat donation. <laughs> he says, teach us how to spin plates and buy exotic cars, human. That's a wink wink to Richard Cooper, I think. Look, I don't I don't hate Richard Cooper. Um, I think he sort of articulates, like for guys who are interested in sort of game and dating and you know they that's all just about women and dating and stuff he's probably he talks a lot of sense out there as does Rollo Tomasi and stuff like that I'm just not that interested in that stuff um but I think in terms of kind of more experienced guys talking about that to younger guys uh well you know my hats off to them I, I actually think they're probably better than some other people out there uh, so if you're into kind of dating, hooking up women, uh, pick up all that stuff, you know, I, I would, if guys are interested in that, I would point them to those guys because uh, they can intelligently and, and they can, they can articulate that, that sphere really, really well. So I remember I, I used to, um, I discovered Richard Cooper before he uh, before he he grew his beard. I remember he was just talking in his apartment, and this would have been just after I think his divorce or something. And he was just kind of talking in that pocket of, you know, uh, he he got his life like he he was you know he'd moved on. He was on his own now. He's he got his routines going. He was just talking like a, a normal guy doing a vlog in his home and just kind of having a chat with you. Uh, so I remember discovering him then, and I actually enjoyed um, watching his content then. Now it's kind of like um, I, I think his audiences uh, are, are much more younger guys. So um, remember, if you want to ask me a question, uh, put a bunch of emojis before your question, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, Quasi Man Dias says. If you don't intend to solve your problem seeking advice, guaranteed problem seeking advice guaranteed to fail can be a great strategy because it validates one's lack of success. Yeah, but if you're too myopic to even know if it's gonna fail, that's the that's the out, isn't it? Like, well, I didn't know this person was pushing it on me, selling it. They were presenting themselves as an authority. They're the bad person. They're the grifter. It's um, it's a tricky one. How how do you make a person astute? How how do you make a person uh, snap into sort of uh, mature and stoic responsibility? Even if they kind of they've made a lot of mistakes. What if they've had an, uh, like an overbearing single mother who hates men, blames everything on the father and says, you're just like your father. Uh, like, yeah, what about all of the stuff that uh, is accumulated through childhood? A lot of those scars that'll never go away. I'm not saying they're excuses and, I, and, and I'm a big advocate of facing those things, acknowledging where your problems might have come from and then fixing them and not feeling like you're helpless. Like, oh, I'm just this way. This I always do this. I'm always addicted to this. I always go out with these kind of women. That's just what I'm into. And then you complain about the results of always consuming that product or that woman. There's a difference between trying to find the unicorn in the bad women template that you're always going for. 
that's a unicorn. But if you refuse and if you say like, no, no, I'm going for normal, more well-adjusted, girl next door type of everyday people that I'm going to listen to what they say, their values, their virtues, then finding someone while it still may be difficult doesn't resemble a unicorn anymore. Because a lot of these guys where these dating coaches are teaching them strategies to get their kind of dangerous bimbos that you can't tolerate for more than a night and you try and make a relationship out of these women, it's really, it, it's, it's, it's worse than trying to win the lottery in terms of finding a good relationship in that batch of people. It is like trying to find a unicorn, i.e. won't happen. You've got vastly bigger odds at winning the lottery three times in a row. And I've never won the jackpot once. By playing in that pool. It's kind of... Your perspective and your... What's the word I'm looking for? Your posture. I don't want to use the word frame. But your posture in how you lean into the world, how you speak, how you insist you want to be. Like the words I use and how I conduct myself, I sharpened this over time. Like you guys can probably guess, I wasn't this way in my 20s. I would have had the curiosity, um, my peculiarities, my little predilections and like my scars and all that. And they, a lot of them will always stay with me. But what I was was insistent on overcoming my curiosity, my the sharpening of myself, being able to express and like, you know, the pressure cooker of like, you got this anxiety, you can't talk to women or you can't express yourself or like you're frustrated at, never, you know, I should have, why didn't I say something last week when this happened? I kept my mouth shut and now I'm a pressure cooker. How do you release the pressure valve? speak, think, write, all of a sudden the pressure valve gets released. All of a sudden pressure doesn't develop anymore. You're constantly in a healthy way releasing that pressure. It's like a gr it's an engine that's running properly and you're always fine tuning it. I fine tune it with my writing, my videos, uh, sort of really putting in my hands in life, having great conversations with you, doing these sort of things. Like I've, I've said to many of uh, the people in my life that Every night before the stream uh, or before doing a video, I really resist it, but I always do the thing I'm resisting because I know there's the real part of me that knows that once I do it and then afterwards, I'm going to get so much out of life and I'm so grateful that I did it. The night before the stream, I feel like uh, I'm not looking forward to like the unpredictability, the uncertainty because I'm a big, big control freak and I want to sleep in and I'm looking for all these hamster wheel excuses but then I do it, I prepare and I keep it a habit. I do the right thing. Always do the right thing, human. Always do the thing you should do, but you, you're resisting, always. Never lie to yourself. And you do it. And then like now I, I, I have a great time with you guys. I love doing these streams, but every safety aspect of me beforehand is building a cage to protect myself from the uncertainty. But I get so much out of this. Um, when I do my videos, I hate talking to the camera. I'll never get used to it because it's not a person. I just can't. I can't pretend to like a lot of the younger generation. They, you watch videos, you know, how to get comfortable vlogging and talking to a camera. It's like, I oh, treat the camera like it's a person. I can't because it's not. And I have the same reflex like on a date. Like I can't love this person because I can't because she's not lovable. Yeah, she, like I can pretend that she's just because she's pretty, she can be a girlfriend, but she's not. In the same way, this camera is not a person. I can have a good time with you guys now because there's this real-time interaction with people. Um, it takes my mind off the camera, but when it's just me and this camera, this black foreboding eye looking at me, I can't. Okay. I'm doing some really nice waffling on this morning, aren't I? <laughs> Doug B, thank you for the super chat donation. He says, while the gurus may be a faulty lighthouse, it can be another way of hammering personal pillars, but you have to understand yourself to do it. Look, this is why I don't hate uh, a lot of these kind of Chad gurus. I, I hate the brash ones like the 
Andrew Tates, I think his name is, and that was the person I was referring to in the in the in a previous video. But there's not like I don't want to kind of pick on him. Like who cares? Like he does what he does. I'm sure he gets rewarded. He likes his life. Um, but I think um yeah, the, the the thing that happens is where people get sucked in, they give you 80% or 90% of the truth, but the 10%, the quality of the 10% of the delivery and the way in which they go about it, where they like, because um, I notice a lot of the PUA st so, sort of guys, they talk about a lot of biological, structural, legal, um, just real common sense, stoic, um, airtight stuff that I can't disagree with. And then right at the end, and then the solution is blah, 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 which I'm completely not on board with. So the I'm, I'm not going to say lies, but a lot of the best lies or the, or the, the lot of the ways people get sucked into something is 80% of truth that you can't deny to get you through the door. And then the last portion of them selling you their product or selling you their vision, you don't really question the rest because the 80% sort of alleviated a lot of your stress, if you know what I mean. So if you're a guy who's been divorced or gone through a lot, and all of a sudden this person speaks in a way that, because not everyone's going to respond to the way I speak, my diction, uh, the way I articulate, my accent, um, how I am. There might be just something about me that's like, yeah, I don't know what it is about this guy, but I don't like him. The speed of my um, my delivery, things like that, you know, who knows? Um, if I spoke slower, I may be able to get through to one particular person compared to another one. But so that's why I said, like a lot of these guys, they they tell you a lot of truths, and then a lot of these guys who feel really weak and that they don't have a voice, the last ten percent, like the Andrew Tates, they kind of they use a hammer to kind of give you confidence, which is great for the person that kind of is tired of being invisible. And like it gives them a voice, which is great. But some of these are like overly cartoonish macho tactics. They remind me of the really loud feminists as well. Like they just kind of like, they redline the volume. It's kind of like, okay, we can talk about fairness, reality, biology, blah, blah, blah. And then they just kind of go, they crank it and blow the speakers and go like, wham. David actually says something. I used to have a dating profile that included the questions, what do you have to offer? <laughs> That'd be a bit confronting, David. It's as if it it is, it's as if I were invisible. Yeah. Look, I can understand how that's confronting. In the same way, if a woman say she's realistically saying, What do you have to offer? But if you were to talk to her, she would be sensible and saying, like, you know, your character, um, fairness, blah, blah, blah. Because I'm tired of guys offering nothing other than wanting to get into my pants. But I think if someone doesn't know you, this is where there's this lack of communication where you just read messages and see posts. We're so defensive of being used by everyone that we take the glass half empty attitude whenever we read something because we're trying to defend ourselves from all the majority out there who are ready to use and abuse us. That question's great when you're on a date, David, I think. like, And I wouldn't even, so I would soften it to kind of get the same answer from them. So it's not so much what do you have to offer. I remember asking women on um, first dates in a playful way um, because the topic would come about, um, you know, the quality of guys and how they're sick of these guys. And I'm saying, yeah, I'm sick of these kind of women as well. Like I just, and I would say to them, this, like the kind of guy you want, the really good guy, uh, what are the great qualities? Like what could you offer a great guy, you know? Um why you, what would make you a girlfriend, uh, a great girlfriend? Like, oh, I want to hear the great qualities you got. Like what, what these guys don't see, you know? So there's ways of saying it that kind of, it's kind of not like blunt force, but you're going to get the same answer. Like, tell me why you're, why you're so good. You might have high expectations, but they need to be matched with something reciprocal. Yeah. I want a guy who's going to offer me these really good qualities, which might not be really high, but they might be sensible. Like I, my my standards for a woman, I don't think are high, but they're essential for foundations, like uh, kind, uh, reciprocal, um, empathy, just like really 
human characteristics that you would have in friends and family that you rely on and trust and that that are there for you in your life that are not there like none of my family and friends the people i love i never i don't see any of them with their hand on the rug ready to rip it from underneath me never and i trust them all completely that none of them would even do that if they did it that would be like whoa I was like that. That's like a, a science fiction movie. That was like that was something I never expected. You know, you can't go around life never trusting anyone that you kind of have earned uh, their trust. So, yeah, th- these these dating gurus. What what I don't like is that. Well, they're all the same. Every woman's got their hand on the rug, ready to rip it from underneath you. The skill is taking her hands off the rug and keeping her chained away from putting her hands on the rug, because every woman will want to do that and gleefully laugh as she does that. But you've got to keep her away from the rug. And it's like, how about I don't pick a woman who wants to put her hands on the rug? How about that? Oh, no, they all want to put their hand on the rug. Like, yeah, they're all incentivized to, but how about with conversation and with my own judgment, in the same way I judge my diet, my routines, how I live, when I go to sleep, how sensible I am in life, you know, the right way to be for myself. How about I use that same brain power and that same clarity for someone external to me? And and that's more important because I can't read her mind. Let me judge objectively as best I can through conversation, through my ears and my mouth, my senses, my, you know, the, the library of days and months and uh, years of knowing this person. Let that solidify some sort of understanding of trust I have with this person in the same way that my habits over time, I can trust myself now that before I form the habits of disciplining myself, like if I just let myself go, I'd be a fat bastard now. And, you know, you could have diabetes and whatever, but you kind of, you trust yourself a bit more. Um, It's vitally more important to trust yourself first. And then the degree to which you can trust yourself You've got more confidence in trusting your judgment with other people. Again, they're much more unpredictable because you can't read their mind. They could turn left at any moment. Uh, If you turn left at any moment in your head, like you're still with yourself, like you can still recover. So it's more important you understand yourself first, your own boundaries, so that you've got less chance of being taken advantage of of somebody else simply by way by the way in which you conduct yourself. It's it's all about you in a non narcissistic, non solipsistic way. That's kind of my thinking. Marcin Himi says, human just put some eyeballs on the camera. When was that? Was that when I tried to get focus? Roman says, you must have a great bladder, human. If I drank as much as you did in the stream, I would just forever have to stop the stream and run to the bathroom. I go to the bathroom right before the stream. Um, it's probably why I don't, uh, the streams don't go for more than like two and a half hours at max. I try and keep them under an, an hour now. I think they're nice. Like I'd rather do like more frequent streams that don't exhaust me. So, um, so I'm able to do like two streams a week, one midweek and one weekend. And I'm going to intentionally use an incorrect word. These uh, these streams probably are the funnest for me because I don't have to get up super early. And um, although actually I'm enjoying the midweek streams now, I think just because they're not, uh, they haven't been a habit, I'm getting used to them. I'm much more comfortable once I've crossed the boundary of an unfamiliar habit. Uh, Martial arts oriental medicine says... Uh, men and women can have peace again. We don't have to go back to the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Trad stuck on the rhetoric idea and don't see past the evolution and having good futures and not extreme. We are experiencing interesting times. Yeah, this is a teething process. This is a real uncomfortable time for women now. Women might think, I mean, women are steering the ship and the future is female. Women are in charge of the social script now, fine. But women have a lot of responsibility. They're not used to this. They're not used to 
sort of uh, freed, uh, responsibility with, with freedom. Men, men, are, men are frustrated, but we're a lot happier. Women are frustrated and unhappy. Their workload is doubled. Um, they're frustrated with men not helping them anymore. Um, they're having a hard time doing it on their own. Women aren't as uh, comfortable being out there on their own. They're a lot more fearful. L look at the pharmaceutical industry. They've um, Antidepressants with women is like five or six times more than men. Uh, women are having a harder time. Uh, frankly, men don't care. Again, like I can, I can have kind of philosophical sympathy from a distance. Like, oh yeah, that's unfair that a human being feels that and is treated like that. Yeah, good luck with that. But uh, I think women now they burnt the bridge of having relationships with men intimately, liking men in their lives, like their boyfriend, their husband, their brother, and like, like every guy that's near them physically is like a potential threat. And they don't like them. You know, they're a villain. They're a wolf. every guy's a wolf in sheep's clothing. With that kind of attitude, you're going to get no help. You're always on your own because, like, you're unlovable. Like, no one's going to try and embrace, a, like, you know, a, a, a snarling dog. And you can forever say, oh, well, you know, I'm only snarling because of all of my scars and I was beaten. And it's like, I don't care if I can't even patch you. Like, I want to love you, but, like, you're too dangerous. I promise I won't bite you. I can't trust you. I can't even I can't even spend the time with you to see if I can trust you. Do you understand? Because of your your attitude from day one. Women don't make it easy for men to to lower their defenses at all. It's not just the law. Like even if the laws were the way they are, just talk to the average woman out there. Go on dates with their expectations, how they talk about men. Like just from the first date like even if you the laws just keep the laws the way they are women's character like it's like there's nothing attractive for me to even try so just, women are having hard times because they're stuck between a rock and a hard place they don't want to that women don't like saying sorry they don't like responsibility they don't really feel guilt very much and they don't like being shamed that's why they don't want to admit guilt because they don't want to feel shameful about it and so now they've burnt that bridge and it's like, what do you do now? They've only got the one trick of shaming men into loving them. That really works, doesn't it? Hate someone into loving you. <laughs> oh, it's stupid. And the dating gurus are hating men into getting unlovable women. It's just like the, 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 uh, the tool used these days, whether it's from women or from men, whether it's like the, the guru brothers or your prize in women, everyone's like really acerbic and hateful and none of them resemble anyone you'd be comfortable with. Like how would I, how could I relax with this person? This person's like high energy. Everyone that's like even, look, look at the most popular gurus out there, like Russell Brand. I don't mind him, right? But like, look at him for an enlightened, you know, namaste kind of person. Like he's so, so highly strung that's your spirituality. Like wherever comfort should be, wherever stability should be, the way it's presented today says a lot about what we what people respond to. What gets views and eyeballs is just, it says a lot about the culture. Anyway, finish my coffee. Now it's time for, in case anyone's wondering about my boring drink, it's an uh, orange electrolyte in water. Rocket scientist says, human is drinking all that coffee because he, he likes doing streams. He has an excuse to drink coffee. Coffee for me, it's a funny thing. Um, with food, I'm not that addictive. Uh, coffee for me is like a, a comfortable habit. It's a warm feeling rather than a flavor I'm addicted to. I'm the kind of person, I'm kind of odd in that way where I love pizza, for instance. Uh, I don't, you know, be, be, like I have hierarchies of importance where if something's, 
if I'm addicted to something that's healthy, I let myself go and enjoy it as much as possible because there's very little to no downside. But where there starts to be a downside, I pull myself back. And even, even though I love pizza, it's not just the kind of gaining weight and everything, but if the if I love that food, and then all of a sudden a doctor, the doctor said to me today, a oh, human, you've been diagnosed with blah, 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 and like um, the one thing that's going to exacerbate that and make your life even worse and, and deteriorate your health is pizza. Um, you really got to pull it back. I'll be like, you know what, I'm just ending it. Like, like I'm not eating pizza. Like it's done. I'm not curb. So I'm one of those people, if I was a smoker and then I got bad news, uh, first of all, I never kind of drank or or smoked because of, of the control side of me, but also the health implications. Like I generally lead a, I've got a leaning towards a healthy lifestyle, whether it's mentally or physically. I've always been that way. But if the doctor said like, yeah, uh, cut back the pizza, I would cut it back. If I was a smoker, even though it's addictive, I, I'm one of those people that can go cold turkey because my brain tends to override my emotions much more than the average person. Anyway, let's get to some of the um, comments under the videos. Uh, Ryan, he commented under the uh, the video when she has nothing to offer except her dot, dot, dot. Uh, he said, while it's easy to get a hookup or are friends with benefits, it's really hard to find a quality, healthy girl since the culture here is to jump into a relationship, get intimate, then get to know each other. Break up, get back together again, lather, rinse, repeat until you find someone else with different issues you hope will be sm will be better than the abusive DRUG addict that you are currently dating. And if it fails, then it's the other person's fault. If people would take the time to get healthy, learn the tools to deal with their baggage and develop positive habits, then they would attract healthy people. The problem is in an area like this, it's not easy to find someone who is self-aware and ready for a healthy relationship who isn't already taken. Well said, well said. Yeah, but that's the mode, isn't it? Jump into the deep end with someone, grab hold of them, sink, and hope you survive, and then see if it works. Rather than the other way around, see if there's a potential, and then, like, what advice would you give your best friend, your child, uh, your, your, your family member, or someone who is kind of going on a course of action that you just kind of say, you'd, you'd ask them to sensibly go through the steps. You wouldn't say, yeah, do tep, sten, step 10 first, and then do see if one, two, and three work. It's like, that's, that's just priming it for a train wreck. Uh, LatQCD92 um, on the recent video about uh, is this dating advice? It's coming from Gurus. He says, women are on social media like Instagram drooling over what other women have and feeling entitled to it. And men are on YouTube looking at what other dating coaches other dating coach men have and trying to figure out how to get it so they can give it to women because that's what women are actually after in the hopes that women will give them the crumbs of companionship and intimacy in exchange. As women become more and more materialistic, men's pursuit of materialism in exchange for companionship and intimacy increases. Men wouldn't be as obsessed with money if women didn't attach a dollar value to the crumbs of intimacy and companionship they offer. Yeah, it's really an insidious cycle. Men have, women have gotten more, more materialistic, increase their demands, and the demands aren't anything to do with the person. What you actually want from being with someone, a companion, intimacy, love, all that stuff, what you want there has nothing really to do. That space, what you enjoy, the feelings that... Yeah, there's structural kind of... You want to be kept safe. You know, you, you want to know that tomorrow your world with this person isn't going to end. You know, you, you need to pay the bills and things like that. But they are so focused on being Miss Hollywood and the guys are focused on being Mr. Hollywood that they lose sight of why you even want to be with somebody. They get all this stuff and they're empty. They're, they're effectively like they finally get the million dollar mansion with, you know, five bathrooms and like so many rooms and they're standing there talking to themselves and there's this big echo with no furniture, no warmth, nothing. And it's like, I got what I wanted and I hate it. How do I get back? I don't know how. I don't have friends. I don't know what love is. I don't know who I am. I don't want any of this. Like I thought I did. I've got it. And I don't want it. And I don't know how to navigate now. 
not having that compass in your hand in terms of who you are and uh, how to orient yourself is like really scary. Guys get so far off course. Women do too. Women go so far off course, men follow them because women, men trust and love them and they want them that men find themselves adrift at sea as well. Alicia says, me and my fiance are getting married at 25 and 26. Congratulations, Alicia. Good for you. Good for you. People laugh at sort of people getting married young or or kind of um, for love. But a lot of times people laugh at them without actually um, talking to them, seeing their situation. And, and some of them, like even though I've never wanted kids, I can... Like I can see a, a happy couple who've always wanted to be a mother and a father and they really like enjoy being parents and they get along. I can't deny, I can't sympathize with what really is coming out of these people. And they've kind of really skillfully found the happiness by being genuine to each other, talking, taking the time to sort of really be on the same page of being mothers and uh, a mother and a father, raising a kid, knowing what's important to them. Um, so good for you if you're happy and you're getting married, and especially if you want kids. Do the right thing, people. Stop being children until you're my age and then blaming the world. Martial arts oriental medicine says, human is not rambling. If you listen and observe, you will see past the rambling you hear, and that's up to your understanding and observations. Have people said that I'm rambling? I do ramble a bit. Lestat Travesty says, Curious human, what's most of the stuff on the wall behind you? Pictures mostly, and if so, what makes up the majority of them? Is a lot of stuff, is why I ask. They're old postcards. I went through a period, like maybe 15 years ago, where we had a lot of free postcards in different cafes and shops and things like that. And they would basically be postcards, uh, really nice photography, but sometimes just advertising products. Um, and they would be almost like postcard business cards for businesses. But I like them visually as like just collecting these really well-designed postcards and, and things like that. Some of them were just really beautiful. And I collect a lot of them and I just thought they'd be great backdrops. Now, they're no longer around anywhere. And now I'm, like, I'm going to maybe paper a bit more around the room to have more places to film when if I try to if I want to do different scenes in my videos but basically they're just visual colorful things that I've stuck on the wall some of them are really cool and um, one or two are maybe meaningful but 99% of them are just there visually as a backdrop it's my cinematographer self um, doing these things Sarah's comment <clears throat> under the recent video is the men that talk down to women and put up an act of being a confident, successful alpha man will attract women who lack self-esteem and are shallow. Yes, I agree. Like, like begets like. Uh, the reason these dating gurus are successful may be because they hype up the guys to ask a bunch of women out on the dates. Eventually, one of these women will say yes, but if he was putting on an act in the first place, then he's not going to get the woman he wants. He's going to get that shallow and insecure woman. So the, gurus, so the guru can say, hey, my product worked on you. You found a woman. Your money was well spent. I don't owe you anything. But the guy is now left with some shallow woman who is, un, who is not compatible with him. I've said this a lot. The main thing that I really dislike about the dating guru PUA thing is that it leaves the man often worse off after. Because from the dating coaches and the alpha point of view, it's like, I got you what you wanted. I got you the object, but not the substance. They don't teach you who you are, what your values are, what kind of the quality of the person you should get. They start with a presupposition of all women are the same. They're just there for their bodies. Um, and the justification is the biological differences between men and women and, and the psychological ones, which is true. Um, but the values-based things, when you look at couples that where they do have successful relationships, where they do have long marriages, where 
they're rock solid and they're best friends. It's values based. So this is the thing that annoys me about these car salesman types is where they get you what you want superficially, but they don't get you the quality, the substance. Like they don't get you love, they get you sex. They get you, you know, I've, I've mentioned it before, the three tiers I think are important. Physically attractive, uh, physically attracted to them, mentally attracted to them, and you want the same things in life, your values. The third one's the hardest. Easy the first one, and that's what the hookup and PUA thing is based around, these dating coaches. What all women want, I don't care about all women. The three rules to get any woman, I don't care about any woman. Like none of it's, and, and again, it's not clickbaity. You can't talk about this stuff in a 15 second TikTok video. So what you can talk about is sensationalized Andrew Tate stuff. What you can talk about is like a punch in the face kind of really provocative statement that'll go, oh my God, share this around. Can you believe what this girl said, what this guy said? Uh, look at, uh, here's a 15 second video of this like horrible bimbo and look at what she said in 10 or 15 seconds. This is why men are avoiding women. Well, good luck to you. Are you just recycling 15 second TikTok videos or are you having deeper conversations in a hope to understand you being happier? I think these uh, a lot of these guys and girls are happier with the insecure fight or flight mode of survival and thinking like, I'm on my own, I'm in fight or flight, but that's better than being in fight or flight with somebody. And it is. You're much more secure in your world being in flight or fl fight or flight, at least with your, the boundaries of your single life, than you are in the less controlled state of somebody that you know you can't leave because the law's got you. She's going to take your kids from you. You know, there's less control there. So be careful who's instructing you. As I said in the videos. Do these good guys that are speaking to you, are they mentoring you? Do these guys look like friends that you could catch up with? Could you trust them? Are they guys you could trust? Are they your kind of people? Talk to your kind of people. Don't try and become the Hollywood thing. That's a holiday. You know, I can go visit New York and have a great time, like staying there for a week. But like, I'm well aware, like, I, that's not where I live. I go and watch Top Gun Maverick. That's awesome. But I'm not a fighter pilot. I don't live in that world. Like I know where reality is. And, and I think people are pursuing relationships in the, the fantasy Hollywood kind of online social media Kardashian lifestyle and really trying as hard as they can because they don't know anything else because all their friends are, are being myopically like naive in the same way. Whoa, big jump. I haven't said that in a while, but it did jump in a very big way. Um... Okay. New member. Welcome, Mike. Thank you very much for joining. I appreciate it. Men are people. Uh, I like your avatar name. It's a good. It's a good uh, moniker. Uh, men are people. He says the manosphere sorely revolves around women now. Yeah, it's kind of like women are an easy one. If you can kind of get yourself right around women, then life becomes easier everywhere. Because so women are men's biggest challenge. But what the manosphere and PUAs and all that red community focus on is just women solely. You as a zero chasing zeros as objects and everyone feels like the harder they pedal then like they'll like it's kind of like trying to upload youtube videos if i just like quantity will save me i'll be able to survive and make money by pumping out three videos a day and like exhausting myself and my my th th it doesn't matter that my health is health is awful but rather than kind of coming down and saying no the quality of my life is important the health of my life is important you are actually 
invisible in the equation with a lot of these PUAs. It's very materialistic. It's very surface. And the sad thing is that these guys who are sort of need help and they're broken and they've been through a lot and they can't or they can't get women. They 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 they're at their lowest, and they see guy that look like they're at their highest, and they say, "I'll just follow this guy because." You know, I don't have a map and this guy's got a map and he's confident about his map and he's been there and he's saying, follow me, I'll lead you. It's kind of like when you go to a new country and you've got a tour guide and you're grateful for the tour guide. These gurus, these these alpha dude bros, they look like t tour guides and they smile, they shake your hand, they take care of you. And then they take you somewhere and they leave you in the middle of the Amazon and go, and it's like, where did he go? It's like, how do I get back? So they leave you often in a worse position than than you found them. That's the bad thing. How do they leave you afterwards? Do they leave you healthier or do they just sell you a product and then say like, like um, um, Sarah said, it's kind of, they leave them empty afterwards. It wasn't Sarah, it was someone else. Um, I think it was Lat QCD said it. Uh, it's like afterwards they leave them bereft. Uh, thank you, Adriano Ramos for the super chat donation. He says, do you remember the solidarity Wolf MGTOW channel. I like his new channel also. He has over a million subscribers. Really? Over a million? Good for him. Uh, I remember him. Solidarity Wolf. Yeah, he did he have a different name? Hmm. Uh, Mike, thank you for the Super Chat donation. He goes, hi, human. Hope you are well. Am already on your Patreon. Cheers, Mike Wombat. Ah, Wombat. I know who you are. Um, thanks, man. Thanks for joining. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope I'm, um, providing some value on my channel. I'm trusting I am. <laughs> Ted Wonderful Sim 5 says, coffee is for closers. <laughs> Um, okay. Doug B, thank you for the super chat donation. Doug's comment is most men want someone to be nice to them. Yes. Isn't that amazing? Like the lowest quality. I just want a, a girl who's polite, nice. And again, people have said, you know, nice is different to different people. There's people who love drama that nice to them is someone who can provide them with drama and chaos and stuff. I've gone out with a few girls like that for a couple of dates. And it's like trying to hammer a square peg into a round hole. It's exhausting. I'd rather be at a job I hate. At least I'm getting something out of it. Yeah, Kung Fu Joe says it all comes down to two questions. What do you want and what are you willing to pay for? Afford. I've said in a, a video, one that I, I sort of sums up a lot. What can you live with? Have a look at that video. Another reason why I... I like that video, is for the first time fumbling around with audio, I got a really cheap microphone to sound really good, I think. It was the best radio balance of my voice that I've ever gotten. So if you go back to that really old video, it's a couple of years old. I used the Samsung Q9, uh, Q2U. It's a very cheap and affordable microphone. Great value for money. And I got it to sound kind of in the radio, exaggerated radio way um, that I wanted. But that's, that, that was a really, really good, succinct video. I'm proud of that one. Just for the concept, what can you live with? Wrap that around every interaction you're having, whether it's people or things or routines and, and, and jobs and stuff. Doug B says, women tend to turn themselves into the man they want to date. Interesting. Kicking Kanga in a comment under a uh, recently uh, recent video, he said, teaching someone to put on an act is not mentoring, it's sales tactics. Mentoring is about personal growth and realizing that some people are not created equal. Even with millions in the bank, being authentic is the key to happiness. 
very, very well put. Again, with these people, they have very little to offer. Would these people be your friend? These people are probably entertaining. And what's troubling and bothers me a lot is that these guys, they kind of, they're entertained and drawn to these people like a horror film. And then they don't realize that they, they, they've chosen to live in a horror movie. You are the closest relationships you continually have in your life. The f five closest people, habits, routines, hobbies, your job, whatever consumes most of your time, the, the comfortable sleepwalking parts of your week, uh, that's what's conditioning you. And if you think, oh, it's just a bit of fun, it's the same way as the people, especially women who watch a lot of reality TV and these atrocious train wreck shows where women are tearing each other apart uh, psychologically. That starts to, like when a woman sort of says she, she, she schedules those programs through the week, she's watching that trash, that conditions you. I, I doubt that those women are really nice. They may be nice underneath, but they've kind of, they've kind of drowned themselves in the character traits of the, the people they're socializing with on screen and consuming. It's no longer entertainment. It's what you love reflecting and talking about. And because seriously, even if she was a nice person underneath, if I tried to talk to her, all, all she'd be able to talk about is that reality TV shows that she consumes. Like what are my hobbies? What are her hobbies? If her hobbies are materialistic shopping and watching reality TV. It's not just that I don't have anything in common, common, uh, common with her subject matter. The quality of her subject matter and what she's able to talk about. It's the same with people who have kids. Have you noticed your friends who have children, you catch up with them on barbecues and they just talk about their kids, their jobs, the car, uh, products, upgrading this, that, their phone, blah, blah, blah. Their world is just kids and stuff and jobs and stuff. Like you really, you only can talk 5% with them and they're fairly kind of boring. And you enjoy the time you spend with old friends because of nostalgia. Uh, but just where you spend all your time is what you're conditioned by. Really pay attention to the hygiene of the people and things in your life and where you're not happy, where you want to just do the best to kind of um, fix that. Lean towards the light, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Spartacus, thank you very much for the super chat donation. His comment is, I enjoy Andrew Tate, but I don't trust him. Yeah, that's the thing. He's enjoyable to, I wouldn't say he's enjoyable, but again, he says a lot of uh, things that are very right. And a lot of these uh, people, they get you with a lot of the truths. And then how far you go after the truths that they've hooked you with is up to your astuteness of uh, being able to read uh, between the lines in the same way when you go on a on a date with, with a narcissistic woman if you're led by an Andrew Tate something feels wrong and you're just going on the adrenaline of Andrew Tate and the entertainment value are you this kind of guy that goes on the adrenaline value of a hot woman think about that if you're led completely by a hot woman and afterward you say, oh, all women see, it's not my fault, it's hers. She led me. And if you're led by an Andrew Tate, these things are two peas in a pod. The Andrew Tate and the hot mess, they're the same thing. They're two sides of the same coin. So if you're not astute enough, self-aware enough to cherry pick what you value from Andrew Tate and just sort of see, well, not the other stuff because he's not the kind of guy that would be my friend. You can actually take useful information from someone like that. If you go on a date with a hot mess that's nothing like you, she doesn't match you, you're not compatible, you can say, well, she's hot. If you want to, you can sleep with her for one night. She's fun. She might be a friend, but there's not a chance in hell I'm, I'm taking one step down a relationship. You're not meeting my friends. You're not, um, I'm not committing to you. Uh, I'm not going to start talking in language that would suppose a relate. You know what I mean? Like being astute enough to read between the lines and assess your boundaries in relation to the person. They're this. They're a hookup. I'm single. This is a holiday, but this is where home is. You know, this is a friend. I don't. Uh, I can trust them. This guy's entertaining. I don't trust him. I can cherry pick some things that are useful. There's business. There's life. But well, uh, well put, Spartacus. I enjoy Andrew Tate, but I don't trust him. 
He's trying to replace Kevin Samuels' uh, human speaks facts. Thank you. That's an insult to Kevin Samuels, I think. But I know what you mean. Kevin Samuels, I respected him a lot more. EI says, human, can you do a collab with Better Bachelor sometimes? It would be awesome. I've never spoken to him. Out of all the um, uh, sort of more mainstream popular channels, like I'm not a mainstream channel, uh, but the, the, the more popular ones than mine that are more mainstream, that are known in the relationship, male, female, uh, red arena, if you want to call it that. Um, yeah, he would probably... Uh, him, maybe Rollo, uh, be simply because I respect their personalities as well. Um, we've all got tastes and and uh, lanes that we like to speak in where our interests lie, but those two guys, uh, I respect them as people. Um, they seem like two, you know, solid guys. I like them. Whereas some of the other stuff is just kind of reality TV, entertainment, tabloid garbage. But um, yeah, I, I, I don't think I'd say no to Better Bachelor. It depends if we cross paths or if we get into contact with each other. But, um, I heard in the grapevine from uh, people I know that follow, uh, watch his content regularly, um, that he's having the same problem that I had like a couple of years ago when you know I, I showed my face and I continually am evolving in my channel. I'm sort of growing in, in the direction that I choose to grow and doing stuff. And my channel's suffering, but I don't care. You know, my channel is stagnated because I'm not just kind of delivering cookie cutter, like delivering the exact same thing that people want to see. I heard that um, Better Bachelor's having sort of a struggling with being tired of just repeating the same things. And I feel for him. Maybe that's a, a topic I could have with him. I've been there, man. Uh, and I know what it's like. Like you're, you're making good money. Um, he's making good money, uh, a living. It affords him freedom and luxury. But at the same time, like clockwork, He's just kind of producing like cans on a conveyor belt for people. And he's just tired of stamping cans on a conveyor belt. But um, yeah, you gotta, you got to risk uh, losing a whole bunch of, uh, especially money. Because YouTube, YouTube wants you to be a cookie cutter so they can predictably feed you the same type of ads that will make predictable money. If you're if you're sort of a, an evolving human being that's kind of like a moving target, it's kind of like yeah, like we won't sort of bother with him too much. We'll give it we'll we'll, we'll give him a chance here and there, but um, I don't make much money at all. I, I make I make peanuts at best. A month, it covers like uh, one or two of my bills, electricity and stuff like that. Um, so it's a, a couple of bucks additional that helps me with a lot of utilities. So I'm really grateful that you guys and um, the ads that sort of come in, uh, intrude every now and then on my videos, they pay, pay for my utilities. Um, but I'm, I sort of love doing this. I love editing. I love video. Um, I'm a nerd with this kind of stuff. And, but I also kind of, uh, I love these kind of conversations. So this stuff began and is still largely a video journal, a video diary for me. And I love that it's kind of expanded to be uh, in a lower level, uh, the same for a lot of you guys who are supporting me in a, in a regulars as well and contribute to the the comments. Mike, thank you very much for the um, super chat donation. I appreciate it. I put up a poll last, uh, no, early in the week uh, when I was talking about the, the bad boy sort of gurus dating and stuff. And I said, okay, I, I know there's the rational, ontological, biological arguments, uh, the differences between men and women psychologically, the, the laws out there, all the kind of stuff that the, the manosphere repeats. I get it. But aside from all of that, why does she like the bad boy? Aside from everything that's been repeated, we, we kind of know she, he, they talk about the bad boy in terms of him being the alpha and blah, blah, blah. And I just quickly came up with the first things that popped into my head. But And obviously... The fourth one is like the last one is always other comment below because I want to hear your thoughts because I can only kind of make a poll with the first thing that comes to my head after I've made the video, the things that are important to me, what stood out. And so I've the most popular seems to be he's the only guy who can tolerate her emptiness. And um, yeah, I, I, I vacillate between 
Um, she's in holiday mode and he's the only guy who can tolerate her emptiness. But yeah, I would agree largely with that. The bad boy can tolerate her. It's not so much he tolerates her. He doesn't care about her. He doesn't need to tolerate her. I think the, the majority of us guys who try and have relationships with them and give these women a chance for something beyond just getting to bed, like we fool ourselves into thinking maybe it'll work out, we tolerate them. I don't think the bad boy does. But I know what it means, this 35%. And obviously, a lot of these things, it's all of the above. It, she stays young, blah, blah, blah. But I wanted to see what your first in instinct is. So obviously, it could be a all of these. And um, let's see how many. And in terms of uh, the responses, some of the responses were... Um, Sort, sort by newest comments first. Yeah. Yeah. Why do they choose the bad boy? Because it's what they relate to the most, being a jerk. I said in the video um, that they recognize a familiarity. Growing up in the schoolyard with women, uh, with, other, with other girls backstabbing, friendships broken, not trusting each other, your, your best friend, your best female friend smiling and saying, I love you. You're my best friend. I love your dress. And as soon as she walks away, she'll like turn to the other girl and say, what a bitch. I hate her. It's like just the mistrust. You can never trust anyone. And like that jerk aspect, I think, is they, they recognize the familiarity because the direct straightforwardness of a guy, I think women aren't used to it. I've, I've heard it from many women. And I've talked to some women who swing both ways. They're bi. They say, I find it much easier going on dates with guys than I do with women. With women, it's kind of like, I, I can't make heads or tails. If I'm direct, they get offended. If I'm honest, they get offended. When If I think it's funny, they don't. It's just like, it's very, very hard to read women. With men, it's like so easy. You guys are so transparent. And I'm like, yeah, right, I know. So I don't, like, I think women's problems with men are really their problems with themselves. Because men are very basic. Like, I don't get offended when women say men are easy to read, men are Neanderthals. Yeah, so what's your problem? Why are you complaining? If you're so much smarter, why do you have a problem with us? That we don't understand you. Well, if you communicate, you brainiacs, the simplest man would be able to understand you. But if we're supposed to read your mind, how is a Neanderthal, a simple guy, a basic guy, he doesn't have that skill. You're supposed to be more advanced. Communicate, use your words. A lot of these are elementary, you know, Leah says, because women on the whole are superficial and de devoid of rationality. Rationality is very boring to women. Uh, women lead much more to be excited by the romantic side. So if you told a woman, you know, this is the way to get a happiness and find someone to love. And it's kind of like a very, very basic process that anyone would like know. And it'll be like, yeah, but what's the magical way? It's the same way with health. Move around, lift weights, eat healthy. Yeah, yeah, but what's the special 10, 10 step special romantic way of losing weight and getting six packs? I want to know that way. Sorry. I think it's the same way with the red pill stuff. It's that we want the magic solution. And a lot of times you don't need the red pill. You just need to sort of be honest and, and put the mirror on yourself. That's essentially what that the, the that moment was in the matrix. You know, in one hand, like uh, Morpheus, like he, he may as well have sort of said, in one hand, you've, uh, you've got this placebo, you've got the blue pill. In the other hand, you've got a mirror. Do you want the mirror or do you want the blue pill? And essentially like Neo picks the mirror. Oh, Adriano says, sorry, solitary wolf. Ah, yeah, that's that sounds more familiar, Sol solitary wolf. That's why I thought, did he change his name? Uh, Doug B says, we all have to be careful not to pass our own on our own damage to other people. The new person isn't there to have the 
have the fights you wanted to have with your ex. Exactly. A lot of men and women go there wanting to stand up to their ex because they never did. And I've always kind of been humbly, not always, I'd say later on when I was more interested in articulate with this stuff, because I want to be treated the way, like, like I go by the golden rule as much as I can, that kind of nice, agreeable part of me, I'll always try and be nice if the person's giving me no reason to, to sort of put up walls. I don't want her judging me on her ex. If her ex treated her like shit, don't treat me like shit. That's not fair. At the same token, I have no right to treat her like shit if she doesn't deserve it. I have no reason to limit her connection with me if she's trying her best to be open and my scars aren't letting her um, fairly like she's putting in a lot of effort to get through to me and I refuse to because I haven't dealt with my own crap. So uh, we have to be uh, self-aware to the degree to which they're putting up walls or we are as well. We can't just be looking out and judging them. We have to kind of judge ourselves in the interaction. It's not easy, but the more you're self-aware and like you find this stuff more interesting, the easier it gets. The easier the that reciprocal dance becomes. It's no longer what you're going to get from the person. It's how well you dance with the person. And that has to do with your steps in this dance as well. It's the dance of you leading and her following. It's the dance of the whole thing working in unison. Um, yeah, for women, excitement and instability equals love. It, it doesn't make sense, does it? They're two opposing things. I want a guy who makes me feel safe and he's got, and he's rich and he's stable and I feel completely safe. But why do we keep doing the same things? Why doesn't he change his job? Why doesn't he get more money? Let's get a new, like, I, I want a comfortable home, but I want to keep changing it every week. I want new furniture all the time. Yeah, only satisfied with the moment. Never satisfied with the choice you made yesterday. Daddy issues, yeah. Again, this stuff can come out in conversation. Like, It could be all of these answers or none of them. But the only way where you start to zero in, where you start to stack the answers that matter to the woman in front of you is to talk and pay attention to re not just read between the lines. A lot of guys and girls don't even read the lines. She's saying something to you and you refuse to listen. A lot of people will tell you who they are. Some people lie to you. They don't tell you who they are. You have to read the between the lines to look at their actions as well, to make sure the lines and the, ac and the actions between the lines match the overall description you're being sold. But especially with women, women will use words to sell you uh, a lie. And it's not necessarily that they're intentionally and and they realize they're lying to you. They're using words to make the situation feel good and them, them to feel good. So they a lot of women who are in that moment of wanting things to work out and trying to be happy, they'll find themselves saying things that they don't even, that they don't believe in, or no, that they believe in, sorry, they believe in them, but it's not who they are. So they won't know the difference in that moment when they want to love you. They don't know the difference between saying, I think health is really important and exercise is really important and eating healthy is important. They don't know the difference between saying that and saying, oh yeah, I really think health is important and I exercise. To them, that's the same thing. What they believe in, who they are and what they do, it's the same thing. But to us... We need to make sure that the words match match the actions because that's where the rubber hits the road in terms of whether or not this is going to be a train wreck or this is going to stay on the rails. We've been going for an hour and a half. I knew this would be a good stream. Uh, some, sometimes the streams are good, but this one's... I think by dint of the conversations that were happening under the comments of the recent videos, I knew this would be a good one. And I always like it when the, uh, uh, I, I've done a couple of videos that are all related, like this week's, uh, the recent ones have been, and then everyone can kind of coalesce 
and sort of throw their flavor into this soup and, and discuss this thing. Uh, she gets to dodge all the accountability. Uh, she gets to dodge all the accountability and play with the victim after the joyride. Yeah. D Mark II says, bad boys bring, bring drama and that excites her emotions like riding a roller coaster. Yeah, she's just enjoying the feelings. Um, and I think they, like I said, with a with a bad boy, she's not really being responsible because she know the she knows the ride will end. She's not going to live on a roller coaster. This is just a fun, fun temporary ride. This is a way of feeling the excitement of insecurity and chaos within the parameters of it being temporary. Whereas a guy picking this hot mess, that's there's no parameters of temporary. This is like your whole life, potentially. And that's why men are generally more responsible with logic because they have to be, otherwise they're going to end up homeless. If, if, they, if all men acted like women, just had fun and weren't responsible, like the, the explosion of homeless men would be like astronomical. Focused on the future says, water seeks its own level. When it comes down to it, most people are a, a scum. Yeah, let's um, read some notable comments that I saved. And then we'll wrap up the stream. If you've got any uh, comments, guys, while I'm reading these comments out, um, put them uh, on the right in the uh, in the live stream uh, with a bunch of brightly colored emojis so I can see them. Um, Alu Bosir Ojo, hard to read the name. He uh, related to the last video. This is dating advice, is it? He says the same same reasons women love the Kardashians. They inherently want to be these guys. Yeah. The same re reason women love the Kardashians is the same reason these guys idolize the Andrew Tates. They want to be these guys. If you realize you want to be with them and you own it, okay, fair enough. Be who you are. I just don't like how they they um, exploit people. Um, the Andrew Tates of the world uh, have no problem stepping on anyone's neck. For their own survival. That's who they are. It's not a, ju it's a judgment call. It's like it's who we, it is a judgment call, but it's kind of like um, just be careful who like you are going to be sort of wrung dry and tossed away by someone like that. If you if you are an Andrew Tate, you probably don't need Andrew Tate to tell you what to do. That's the funny thing. I think the the people that Andrew Tate is speaking to uh, are the wannabes because if you were like him, you would you wouldn't sort of be such an acolyte. Vladimir says, I think the problem generally is that there's no one else. That's the only reason they're successful. Yeah, a lot of these guys, they're, they're the shining light of entertainment on YouTube. Uh, they get the most views. They get TV shows because they're really large and colorful and like they're shocking. Women love going, oh my God, a lot of money. And he's an arsehole. Have you seen him? And they giggle at him. But then also, you're, you're like that kind of thing. And then guys kind of see like, ah, oh, look, what's on TV? He is. What are the shows on TV? What's the most popular? The, the calm stuff doesn't get ads, doesn't get eyeballs, doesn't get noticed. Uh, this is Yong says, Lo uh, for women, uh, the video I made a while ago about women's stories, to them... Uh, love just happens. And he says, love just happens for women because they don't, don't have to put in any effort. Yeah. To most women who just believe love is luck, I think that kind of goes to shows that they've never had to put in any effort in their relationships. That's actually, um, seems very, a uh, very elementary and sim simplistic answer, but that's a very important one. To those women, they don't put any effort in that's why they think love is magical and it just happens because they don't actually try. They don't even, they're not even responsible for the kind of guys they say yes to. It's like there's, there's so many guys that I can choose from. Like it's like going shopping with like a credit card with no limit. Like I'll, some of the things I buy, I won't like, I can throw them away. There's bound to be things over the time that were fun, things that I keep for a amount of time. Uh, Mogadit says, uh, related to the last video of 
dating advice and gurus, he says, there must be a real lack of critical thinking skills behind the popularity of these chads and chadesses. Surely people must be able to see the fakeness. And Max House says, too many people place style above substance. And I think this is very true. That's a really great um, observation, Max House, that so many people, the popularity of all of these channels just goes to show how most people gravitate towards style and not substance. That's why most guys keep going out with the same train wrecks and then blaming the train wrecks. You, are, you, you don't care about style. I've said it before, unless you find it self-important enough to be interested in how you speak and, and, and providing a philosophical framework by which you interact with friends, choosing lifestyles, how you trust the person, not just that either you can trust them or not, but how you go about it. Unless you get to the point, let me just say this with my big head staring at you, unless you find it important to get to the point where love is a skill, friendship is a skill, your lifestyle is a skill that you are determined and insist on puppeteering, you are just going to be at the whims of the male and female versions of Andrew Tate out there. And the world is replete with them. And because the world rewards them too, they're, they're rich, powerful, and they've got ostensibly great lives on the surface. You know, they never have to worry about the financial crash or anything. They're good. Good for them too. But for most of, the, the, of us in the middle of the bell curve, um, yeah, you're all waiting to win the lottery and it's not going to happen. Uh, be philosophically responsible for finding your way out and not just kind of attaching yourself to parasites, uh, parasite gurus like this that like, oh, well, all I have to do is drop a hundred or a thousand dollars and that's it. They'll fix it for me. No, they won't because they're not going to, they're just going to tell you how to get the object of women. And they're going to say, well, I, I told, that's what you wanted. You wanted women. You got a woman. Yeah, but I'm not happy. Like I'm not selling you happiness. Sorry. To them, grow up, be a man, stop going by your feelings, go out and get the woman you want, get the money you want, stop stop um, complaining that you're not happy with what what you got. So um, yeah, got to be very careful with those guys, unless you are one of those guys. So in, if you are, they're your friends. Uh, Charles says, I found the. I found the complete. Uh, I found the completely honest, upfront relationships I've had since divorce were a lot more genuine, soulful, and fulfilling than my marriage. You quite pre you quit pretending or trying to fulfill a role. I don't talk with my ex-wife, but remain friends with most of the women I've had short-term, one to three-year relationships with. They all think I'm great. My ex thinks I'm an asshole. Go figure. The one that cost me the most has no appreciation. The ones I spent the least on and was 100% upfront about my intentions to love me. Isn't that interesting? When you don't fulfill a role, but you just kind of let go and just be the you that your friends and family see, your life is a lot better. You don't get the Hollywood stuff, but uh, you, get, um, you get reality a, a bit more. And I would say, in my experience, you're more content, more happy. You actually get what's more fulfilling. That's the thing. You don't get superficial stuff. You get fulfilling stuff. Uh, LL says, those bad boy types are always, uh, gurus always point you in the wrong direction and wrong women. Yeah, same thing. Uh, Malay says, um, some of the advice in those channels are good and and some perhaps unrealistic. Becoming, becoming the ver best version of yourself that is personally to you is good advice. Yeah, this is the thing about they get you with like 80% or or whatever, the majority of really sound grounded advice. Like I, I agree with the majority of what they're saying, how they pull the trigger and what the reward is. Uh, I, I, I disagree with a lot of it, but then that comes to, to you being astute enough to cherry pick the limits of who you are compared to them, the limits of their goals compared to yours. The groundwork, um, I think most of us can agree on but it's the final execution and where you're going to direct yourself. Like preparing preparing on the journey, I think is sort of more sensible and realistic. Like we can all agree on how to pack a parachute and talk to the experts. But uh, your life, uh, what kind of parachutist do you want to be, if that's a word? 
that's a bad analogy, but you know what I mean. It is more, uh, uh, Mele Nico continues, it is more of a manual of sorts and data, but yes, being talked down to or paying like thousands of dollars for coaching sessions, me personally, that is ridiculous and a rot. The part is more emotional marketing to the vulnerable, like dating coaches, et cetera. They pay on, they prey on emotions. Yep. Paul King says it gets back to the sim to simplicity. I don't want to manage a woman, especially one whom I don't trust, and I don't want to act, uh, and I don't want to act my way through life. I am myself. Take it or leave it. Really well put. Short and succinct. Why would you want to manage a woman, especially one you don't trust, and I have to continue to act all my uh, all my life and walk on eggshells? Be a nice you. Be a, a fair, nice you, and then try and look for the same in someone who is compatible to you. Still hard, but demonstrably harder than just picking any bimbo out there who's just empty. Uh, the Dark Wolf, um, under one of the polls, uh, I think it was uh, under this poll, he said... Uh, He's the guy she would, she would be if she were a guy. Yeah, a lot of these guys go for the guys that are attractive parts of what tickles her in, in, in terms of herself. She's the mirror of who she she is. She's so narcissistic that she's a reflection of her. She's not the excuse she gives. Oh, poor me. He took advantage of me. No, no, no. You were loving yourself in the form of like an arsehole. Uh, the big dogs eight six eight says, if people would do what they said, most of the problems would go away. I agree. Be honest. Be honest with yourself. Always be honest with yourself, guys. And then the results of that, the residual of being honest with yourself, is that you're a much much more honest with people around you. But the like the reason why you direct honesty uh, in terms of like operating that way from yourself is that your life is better, clearer, simpler, no walking on eggshells. You treat people the way you, you insist you treat people in the way you, you want to be treated. Uh, the equation of your life starts to, to sort of balance up very quickly. But if you play the female game of lying and mind reading and, you know, gaming and all that kind of bullshit, then um, you, get, you get the female world. August Lyon says, personally, I like being a good guy. I like working hard, being responsible, bringing a sense of humor to the people around me. If women are turned off by that, then we are definitely not compatible. I'm not going to change who I am just to get a few more notches on the bedpost. Exactly. Well said. Uh, Richard J., I've come to the conclusion that most women are stuck at the age of, of 13 and 14. Uh, I sort of said makes sense in the world. The system also encourages irresponsibility in women and men drift further and further away as they take on virtually, as they as sort of, they, they make all the adult ways of operating virtually disappear. Um, what did I write? Yeah, I don't, I, you know, when you can't remember what, what you meant by what you wrote, but yeah, it's interesting, like, the, the keeping, they're encouraging us to be stuck as children Women love it because there's no responsibility with being a child. And the only way men can sort of be with women is to kind of like revert, like, okay, the way to operate is all of us act like children because like, you know, masculinity is a bit too adult, a bit too patriarchal and, and mature. Can't we just all have fun? Girls just want to have fun. Fun is being stuck at a 13 and 14 year old. Conveniently enough, when we all hit puberty, Women have a lot of power over guys. Women realize how much power they have over guys. Like before puberty, men don't care about women. In puberty, women are all guys care about, or girls are anyway. And uh, it makes sense why the system has kind of handcuffed women to the age of puberty. And women love it because they get a lot of treats and cookies and all the good stuff. And men aren't threatening Men aren't threatening. Think about the power a woman has in teenage when she was a teenager. 
men men are obsequious. There are very few bad boys when like those those kind of chads are very very few and far between. But women's sense of security and power is like really high, and especially today since women are out on their own, they don't need no man. It makes sense why the system and women want to stay a teenager. They feel most comfortable there. It takes a brave and mature woman to insist on being an adult. Uh, Wayne Figgity says under the um, under the poll, he says women hate being bored. Positive or negative excitement is still excitement either way. And Alexander also said under the poll, if the bad boy gets lucky by taking risks, she wins. If he gets unlucky, she'll bail in her eyes. With him, she has a better chance to win the lottery. Yeah, it's a win-win for her. There's like no risk with a bad boy. She never has to make a choice. It's not really a choice. Like, if it works for a period of time, win-win. If it doesn't work, she's got another choice to shop for another man. Uh, Double Helix says, bad boys require nothing from her and condones just about anything. It's not just that he condones, yeah, he condones, he doesn't care. It's like a, the bad boy is like just thrashing a car that's not his. He's taking a car for a joyride and he can treat it any way he wants and he gets a thrill out of it. He doesn't care about the car. It's not his car. Think about how a bad boy with his muscle car, how he dotes over it, how he loves it, how he respects it. Even if he thrashes it, he treats it really well. The bad boys treat women generally like a rental. JE says, yep, for decades I've said women date bad boys so they can so they can still misbehave while they blame the bad boy for everything that goes wrong. You know, something bad happens because he's the bad one and everyone else knows he's bad. She's the victim, she's not accountable. Rinse and repeat. Yeah. It's a convenient excuse. It's a convenient way to stay on holiday and get everyone else to pay for it. You, you just get a continual holiday going on and on and on until you're old and you don't. Uh, thank you, LT, for the donation. Uh, oh, Lestat, how are you? Uh, you were talking about peanuts. So here's some, bud. Got, oh, yeah, yeah, you're buying me some peanuts. Got a song for you. Many of my favorites thought might like it too. I'll leave it down in regular chat. Nice seeing you, bud. Thanks, man. Thanks, Lestat. You always leave really good comments, like really astute, really good observations. Like, thanks for the comments too, and the donation. Alicia says, any female YouTubers that you like or would even want to do a collab with? I don't watch many um, sort of YouTube uh, Manosphere channels it, like there's guys I've known I've, I've, I've learned to be friends with in terms of female not very many um, I respect what Jennifer Molesky does um, she looks like someone who's fairly in intelligent um, but I don't really follow very many um, yeah female no I, I can't think of any off the top of my head um, it, when friends and people I know kind of direct me and, and show me some videos, then they kind of prick my interest. And then organically, if I start to follow them, if kind of like, oh, I like the way they speak, I like the way they think, let me keep giving them the chance. And then they earn my trust because of the way they think and, and, and the kind of person they are. But aside from Jennifer, I can't actually think of any uh, that I respect, but that's not to say that I wouldn't. I, I just don't watch many much manosphere or relationship sort of stuff because the majority out there is this vitriolic uh, tabloid style reality TV, you know, um, us against them, you know, a man and a woman on opposite ends of microphones, like trying to kind of arm wrestle each other. I'm right. No, I'm right. Men, no women. Uh, like and subscribe, guys. Yeah, helps out. Like, subscribe, join. Uh, if you want to give me a question, uh, either super chat or 
put a few brightly colored emojis uh, so I know it's a question. Let's uh, head for the finish line, guys. Any final questions? And then we'll wrap it up. Okay. Trying to look for questions. Doug B says uh, in his super chat, thank you, Doug. He says, I'm tired of the woe is me argument. Yeah, I'm tired of it too. I, I'll, I'll never blame men completely, but the whole, I'm tired of like the majority of the ministry becoming like the feminists that old school MGTOW used to complain about. Like it's kind of like the popular channels start, are starting to become as bad as each other. The, like here's a here's an uh, an idea for a successful channel. Just get the the most popular opposing points of view, like the the extreme men having podcast debates with the extreme women. Those channels will blow up because everyone loves watching those train wrecks, especially the women. Donna Hannaford, Bettina is a badass than my hero. Yeah, Bettina aren't. She's an older. Australian uh, commentator. I don't know. I think she was a journalist or something. She's an advocate for sort of men's uh, rights, but also sort of fairness, fairness in relationships. Uh, she's pretty good, but I haven't sort of heard anything from her in years, so I, I can't really comment on her now. Feral Android says, is Molesky a pick me? What's that? What's a pick me? I'm not down with the um, the lingo. I'm I'm always being um, <laughs> my acronym and uh, modern lingo has always been updated by people I hang out with on Discord. I I live on my own sort of like I live a, a solitary life too much that I only pick up sort of what people tell me. I don't even really watch the news very much. If the world is burning, my friends will tell me. All right. Okay, okay. I feel like another coffee. But I'll get one as soon as the stream's over. This was a really good stream, guys. Uh, re thanks for the comments under the, the videos. I've been having a lot of fun with... I've changed... Um, I, I overhauled... Not my camera equipment, but... Um, like, I was just going through the motions of filming my videos. And I was just focusing on the content, which is, which is great. But this time, I was kind of like to refresh. And, and this was kind of a lesson for me that like you can always refresh, like pay attention to your world. Like don't just be on autopilot doing the same things, even the stuff you love. Like, you know, pay attention and, and be present in how you're doing stuff. So for the first time I sort of said like, let me change the settings on my camera. Let me research the settings. Let me try a different resolution, different lighting, different way of editing and color grading. Just keep an eye on it and stay present in sort of the process of writing through filming settings, equipment, and also the execution of it all. And I've been having a lot of fun in the last couple of videos. I've been using one of my oldest cameras, which is this one. So I haven't been using my the, my regular newer Canon full frame. I've been using this Micro Four Thirds, the GH5. And I've been really loving the film camera look I've been getting out of the last two videos. Um, so these two top ones, I mean, I... I I didn't like I don't I don't like the result of this much. I think it kind of got really over overly contrasted and such and sharpened. But I'm much more want to refine this kind of look. And I'm really liking and, and that's using this camera. Uh the GH5 like is really a beast and it's re the making these two videos has really tempted me to to look into maybe getting the GH6. But I kind of 
forgot about the GH lineup of Micro Four Thirds because, you know, the depth of field is much better with full frame cameras. A lot of you guys don't know what I'm talking about. But some of you nerds will. Um, but the, the, the film look you can get out of movies, I, I love out of Micro Four Thirds and these cinema style cameras. I, I love the way you can get your videos looking like old school photography, but in a movie. It's really nice. And I love the roll off of the background. It seems like a, a granulated out of focus rather than like just the big bokeh balls. Anyway, enough tech talk. You guys who appreciate it would have kind of blown your load. <laughs> Just because I don't really talk in depth about this stuff. But I also started uh, for a few seconds at the start of the last couple of videos putting up the, the settings and the equipment I use because I'm getting a lot more people asking me about what do I use, what camera, blah, 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 rather than always commenting go to the low bar, look at like always kind of trying to help people out and comment back and forth. I'll just put it on screen for a few seconds and uh, I think that should be sufficient. But yeah, I'm a big nerd in terms of not just the message, but how the message is conveyed. And that's also just not with making videos. It's kind of when you're talking to people, when again, going on a date, picking a person that you think you might be able to love. There's a way of going about it. It's not the quantity. It's not the thing. It's the quality of them. It's the quality of you. All right, guys. If there's no more questions, oh, here we go. Lone Samurai. Do you think the need for drama is a human condition? For millennia, man had, has been subject to the worst that nature has to offer, animals, weather, etc. I think we live in the softest times, and I think especially... The, the human condition almost, when it's so safe, we, we, we create drama to almost feel, sub, to subconsciously almost feel alive. So I think times have become so soft and safe that people are making up bullshit and uh, sort of saturating their lives with it. This is creating problems where there is none. Like, think about it, like, in throughout history, men and women have both had it tough, but in terms of, like, operating with the world, men had it the toughest. Women could sort of take a back seat, and if they picked a good man, and society kind of helped protect them, and blah, 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 women are more valuable. As the, the half of the species that's more valuable is women, because, you know, they give birth, and you could have one man impregnating a tribe of 100 women, and that's fine. But, like, that one woman is valuable. Uh, so women are more valuable as a thing. So And now, because women are more insecure and they value themselves more than guys do, we put ourselves at risk. Because times are safe, uh, much more safe, that's why a lot of these women are now empowered. Like they feel it, it's kind of safe enough for, me, for us to dip our toes into taking care of ourselves. The environment isn't as dangerous as it used to be. So that's why women have kind of gone out there a bit, but they're not used to it. And because now they're controlling the script, um, I think their reflex is like, hang on a minute, like I never used to have to worry about danger as much. That Men used to take care of it. I need to take care of danger now, don't I? What danger? Let me make up danger. So I don't think cognitively women are, are kind of like practically used to doing it in a, in a sensible way. And so they kind of say, well, I'll just... Think up danger. Whereas a man doesn't make up danger. I know some men do. Most guys actually just perceive what actual danger is. And they'll interpret that. Whereas a woman's like, I've never seen danger before. Is that danger? Anyway, that's just my feeling on the subject. All right, guys. Let's uh, wrap it up. That was a really good stream. I think I covered everything. I wasn't sure if I would. The, the trick is to cover a lot in a small amount of time like today, because I knew by the popularity of the recent videos that there would be a lot to talk about, and I wanted to talk about them. There's some really juicy and interesting topics. And uh, I think we got, it through, we got through everything. Anyway, guys, thanks for the support. Like, comment, subscribe. If you've got a microphone, jump on my Discord after this stream. Links in my About section.
I had to refresh the link because like we we're getting a lot of random people just uh, trolling. So new link to my Discord in my about section on my YouTube channel. If you've got a microphone, come, come along. So join, subscribe, like, comment below. Keep the discussion going. Have a good weekend. Uh, enjoy this sunny Sunday in Melbourne. Finally, it's been freezing. Uh, get some vitamin D. And uh, all the best with the people you choose to care about in your life. That was cheesy. Anyway, guys. Stay frosty, as Hicks in Aliens would say. That wasn't Hicks. That was a, a pwn, wasn't it? Anyway, have a good one. I'll catch you soon in the next video, in the next stream. Remember, I'm trying to one stream at least a week, but I've been good. We've been doing two streams a week, so I'm ramping up the productivity. If you guys appreciate it, I'll keep doing it. Um... If I didn't get to your questions, uh, I'll try and get to them next time. Have a good weekend, guys. End the stream, human, will you? All right. See you later. Bye.